All right. Well, in this first section, we have some non-important angles to find. Uh, so not the standard ones that we use every day, that we're going to use every day, like these ones at the bottom, but just these uh, numbers that I picked out. I want you to be, to be able to find these. So we'll start with um, 4 pi over 13. So I'm going to write everything in terms of 13 to pi, so 13 pi over 13. That's a convenient way to rewrite pi. Half of that, 6.5 pi out of 13. And I'm not going to go through this on every problem. I'm going to start doing them faster. But here's the basic process. Then this angle right here would be 1 and a half pi. So add 1 pi plus a half pi. That's how you get 1 and a half. So that's 19.5 pi over 13. Uh, one full circle would be 26 pi over 13. So where does 4 pi over 13 fall? Well, it falls between 0 and 6.5 out of 13. Closer to 6.5. That's the level of, ac of accuracy that you want to have. For 200, that's between 180 and 270. Closer to 180. For 2, now this is 2 radians, not 2 degrees. Because it does not have a unit written on it. So, it's a think about the decimal radians. There's 3.14, there's 1.57, and between those, closer to 1.57. 750 degrees. Well, one circle would be 360. Another circle would be 720, and it's 30 degrees past that. So a little bit past that. 14 pi over 3. Um, so this would be 3 pi over 3 would be a half circle. 6 pi over 3 would be a whole circle. And then 12 pi over 3 would be two whole circles. And then go two thirds past that. Well, what's a better way? Let's do it like this. Okay. So we've got 0 here. So there's 3 pi over 3. That's a half circle. Then we get to 6 pi over 3. Okay. Then another one. Another half circle is 9 pi over 3 and then 12 pi over 3, and then 15 pi over 3 would be right here. So on the circle that 14 pi over 3 falls on, we're somewhere between 12 pi over 3 and 15 pi over 3. Halfway in between those would be 13.5 pi over 3. So 14 is going to be in this quadrant right here, between 13 and a half and 15, closer to 13. It's okay. Negative 2 pi. That's one backwards circle. Remember, the negative just means go counterclockwise. So from zero all the way around once, and back to where you started. Negative 159 degrees. So again, we're going this way. There's negative 90. There's negative 180. It's closer to negative 180. 3.33. Again, this is radians. So it's a little bit past 3.14, but not all the way to 4.71, which would be one and a half. 10,000 pi, it's an even multiple of pi, so it's to the right. 10,001 pi, an odd multiple of pi, it's to the left. 271 degrees, well, uh, sorry, negative 271 degrees. So we'll go around, so there's negative 90, negative 180, negative 270 would be right here. And it is just a little bit past that. Two thirds, again, it's not 2 pi over 3, it's 2 thirds, a number without a uh, unit, so it is radians. So that's like a, what, like a 0.67. So there's 0, there's 1.57. It's in this first quadrant, closer to uh, 0. Okay. With our special angles, we want to not only find them, but be able to convert between degrees and radians. So 4 pi over 3. And when I'm, when I'm finding these, it's going to help me to think about these either in terms of fourths of pi or halves of pi, uh, especially when I'm dealing with radians, or whole numbers of pi, or even sixths of pi. So I want to write this in sixths. So that's 8 pi over 6. So a sixth of pi is the same as a 30 degree angle. You're going to have 3 in every quadrant, just like on a clock. So there's 1 out of 6, 2, 3 out of 6, 4 out of 6, 5 out of 6, 6 out of 6, 7 out of 6, 8 out of 6, 5. Right. Now, what angle is that? 
Relativity is 6 of pi is 30 degrees. So as I'm looking around, um, a couple of ways I can do it. I can say, well, okay, halfway there's 180, then add 30 a couple of times. There's 210, 240. Or I can say, well, there's 270 right there. Back up 30 degrees, 240. 5 pi over 4. I'm counting by fourths of pi. 1, 2, 3, 4 fourths of pi right there. And then a 5 fourths of pi would be right there. So the fourths of pi are the halves of pi. Cut in half again. And what is that in degrees? Well, each of these fourths of pi is 45 degrees. So there's 45, 90, etc., etc. There's 180. Add another 45. That's 225. Three pi over two. If you count by halves of pi, there's one half, two halves, three halves, straight down. What angle is that? 270 degrees. What about pi over six? Well. Uh, the sixths, like we talked about up here, are the clock hours. So there is one sixth, and that's what you're looking for. Pi over six, which is a 30 degree angle. 135 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, this time we're working in degrees, so we'll set up our rating angles in degrees. It's between 90 and 180. Specifically, it's exactly halfway in between, just like these 45 degree angles always are. So when we count to that in radians, we're going to be counting in fourths. So there is one fourth, two fourths, three fourths of pi. So the 45 degree angles, we count in fourths. This is 330. So all the way around would be 360, and then it's 30 degrees short. So a little bit short. So because it's 30 degrees away from the nearest axis, it's going to be one of these multiples of 30 degrees. Or when we're counting in radians, we're going to count by sixths, like on the clock. So there's one, two, three sixths, four six, uh, sorry, four or five, six over six. That's pi right there. That means we're counting correctly. So keep going. Seven, eight, nine out of six, ten, eleven pi out of six. What about 45 degrees? Well, that's halfway between 0 and 90, right there. And that's pi over 4. What about 210? Well, there's 180 right there, and it's 30 degrees past that. So that would be the angle. What is that in radians? Well, because it's 30 degrees past the axis, we're going to count by thirds, which is the same as counting by pi over 6. So there's 1 over 6, 2 over 6, 3 over 6, 4 over 6, 5 over 6, 6 over 6, 7 over 6. 7 pi over 6. 9 pi over 4. So we're in radians already, so we know what to count by. We need to count by fourths of pi. 1, 2, 3, 4 pi over 4. That's pi. That means we're doing a good job. 5, 6, 7, 8 pi over 4. That's 2 pi. 9 pi over 4. So it's a full circle and then another pi over 4. If we think about that in terms of degrees, that's a full circle. So 360 plus another 45 degrees. So that's 405. What about 60 degrees? Well, that's two 30 degree angles. So there's 30, 60. Closer to 90 than to 0. And then uh, in radians, those are sixths of pi. There's 1 out of 6, 2 out of 6. So it's 2 pi over 6, which happens to reduce to pi over 3. So reduce. What about 13 pi over 3? Again, uh, we don't really deal in thirds that often. We would rather have this written in terms of sixths. So it's 26 out of 6. And then you can count in sixths. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Keep going. And if you go one more time around, you're going to get up to 24, and then 25, and 26. So it's two full circles plus an extra two sixths. And in degrees, two full circles would be 360 twice. So 360, 360, that's 720, plus an extra 60 degrees, so 70. What about 405? 
So that's 360 degrees plus an extra 45. Halfway between 360 and add another 90, that would be 40. So right there. So in radians, that's a full circle, 2 pi, plus an extra 4. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pi over 4. Like so. On the back. We want to draw 12, 22. Um, and I'm actually going to answer these questions first. So if I can find a coterminal angle that's between 0 and 360, then I will already know... Uh, already know basically the, I will know a simpler angle that I can draw. So with my calculator, I'm going to find some coterminal angles first. So all I have to do is either add or subtract 360. You want to do a 360. Uh, so let's subtract 360 first. There we go. 862, that would be a positive coterminal angle. Let's do it again, minus 360. There's another positive one. And one more time, 142. These are all in degrees. So there are three positive coterminal angles. And if I keep subtracting 360, I'll get some negative ones. So negative 218 degrees, negative 578 degrees, and negative 930. Uh, one of these angles is going to be slightly easier than the others to graph because it's between 0 and 360. That's the 142. So all of these angles are going to be in the same spot, but I'm going to pick the one that's easiest to find. That's the 142 because I don't have to count around the circle more than once. So there's 0, 90, 180. That means uh, 142 is going to be closer to 180. Okay, let's try this with 7 pi over 13. Now this one is pretty easy to graph as it is. It's already in between 0 and 2 pi. It's going to be on our first trip around the circle. Um, okay, so here's 0. So I'm going to make this, instead of pi, I'm going to make it 13 pi over 13. And then half of that is 6.5 pi over 13. And 7 is going to be a little bit past that. So it's about there. I need a positive coterminal angle other than 7 pi over 13. Okay, I accidentally did 3 here because I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. Uh, I just need 1. So if I subtract, so, so to do a, instead of adding or subtracting 360, I'm going to add or subtract 2 pi. And in terms of 13ths of pi, that's 26 thirteenths. So I'm going to add or subtract 26 thirteenths of pi to get coterminal angles. That's just 2 pi written in a convenient form. So keep the common denominator. 7 and 26 is 33. So 33 pi over 13 is a positive one. A negative one, I'll just subtract a full circle. Subtract 2 pi, written as 26 out of 13 pi. And in this case, I end up with negative 19 pi over 13. Now let's try one with decimals. 3.98 again. This is already between 0 and 2 pi. Remember 2 pi would be 6.2. So it's already on the first path around the circle. Um, so finding coterminal angles first won't give you an easier one to draw. So this is 3.14. That's what we'll call pi in decimals. Half that is 1.57. So we don't have a trap yet. We need to go past it to 4.71. So it's going to be in there somewhere in between those, closer to which one. And if you're not sure, this one's pretty close to the middle. You can subtract. So do 3.98 minus 3.14. How far is it from that side? It's 0.84. How far is it from the 4.71? Do 4.71 minus 3.98. It's 0.73. So it's a little bit closer to the 4.71. And we're going to accentuate that closeness, make sure that our, uh, that our arrow communicates the fact that it's closer to 4.7. All 
Are there any positive coterminal angles? Sure. This time we're going to add 2 pi, again, because we're in radians. But instead of writing it as 2 pi, we'll write it as a decimal, like the angle is. That's 6.28. So that's 3.98 plus 6.28. That's a good question for a calculator. That's 10.26. Not degrees, radians. What has a what is a negative coterminal angle? So this time we'll subtract 3.98 minus 6.28. And uh, Negative two point. How many angles are coterminal with 300 degrees? Well, you can keep adding 360 as much as you want, and you'll keep getting more angles, or you can subtract 360 as much as you want. So there are an infinite amount. That's a lot. All right, so we'll have a quiz on. Thursday. And one other thing I should mention, make sure you know what a radian is. Because I'm going to ask about that. So what is a radian? Think about the radius of the circle wrapped around the outer edge. Something about that. You can put it in your own words. I'm going to ask for that on the quiz on Thursday. <laughs>